the papery voice whispered from the speaker of Brett's voice recorder. Go away. See, it repeats itself, said Brett to Jimbo. Jimbo ran a hand through his spiky blonde hair, squinting at the electrical device. I don't know. How do you know it's a ghost? Brett stood up and pocketed the device. Well, I don't know for sure, but I didn't say it, and neither did anyone else there. Sure sounds like it doesn't like you, whatever it is. Yeah, I know. It's sort of a trend, said Brett, taking his glasses off for a moment to polish them. Huh? Brett held the glasses up and peered at Jimbo through the lenses one at a time. Oh, it's nothing. Just each ghost hunt I seem to go on lately, I get unfriendly messages like those. Jimbo shrugged. Fran's into that stuff. Gives me the creeps, honestly. Don't play for Gonzo. You'll know he'll just laugh. Brett rolled his eyes and checked his watch for the third time in ten minutes. That's after ten now. Where is he? Jimbo shrugged and didn't look up from his handheld game. You know Uncle Gonzo. He probably had to make a liquor run first. He would have called if something happened, right? He cursed at the video game. Maybe he's not coming at all. Maybe he's gotten distracted by a shiny object and forgot to let us know he can't make it. Brett scowled and glanced at his watch again. It hadn't changed. Damn. Jimbo glanced up at Brett. Yeah? You think he'd pass up on a road trip? This was his idea. He spent the past month trying to talk us into it. I could be at home playing Warcraft right now. My guild could use the help. I could have saved the drive up from Bloomington. Anyway, Gonzo can be flaky, but it'd take an act of God to keep him from his precious New Orleans road trip. The game bleeped, and Jimbo clicked it off in disgust. He picked up his beer, sniffed the neck of the bottle, and then gulped down half. Yeah, I know, said Brett. It's just not important to him but to me too. I've got to get away for a while. Gonzo has good taste. New Orleans is an excellent destination. But to me, it doesn't matter so much where we're going. Hitting the road with you guys will be just the thing I need. Work been shitty for you too? Asked Jimbo. Brett nodded. Yeah, it's been crazy busy. But I think I've just spent too much time in my own head, you know? All the stress, it's given me nightmares. A shrill car horn blazed outside, again and again, each blast longer than the last. Damn it! We wait two hours for him to show, and now we're holding him up? Brett swung his backpack to his shoulder and grunted. Jimbo gulped down his beer and belched loudly, tossing the empty bottle in the trash. He grabbed the rolling bag he'd packed and velcroed the game into a side pocket. The two friends exited the townhouse. Brett locked the door, and they headed outside. A powder blue minivan sat idling, headlights on, out in the parking lot. At first, Brett grabbed Jimbo's shoulder to hold him back. They looked at each other and turned to go back to the apartment. The shrill horn, more annoying outside, made Brett jump and turn around. Jimbo cried, Hey, Gonzo! It's a minivan. Brett turned around and laughed, a short bark of a noise. <laughs> I'll be damned. Hey, Uncle Gonzo finally made it. Inside the van sat Gonzo, a bear of a man with a ruddy face, reddish brown hair pulled back into ponytail, and cheerful squinty eyes. Junior, when are you going to stop calling me uncle? That's embarrassing. I'm only a few years older than you. You're that much older than Jimbo, too. But he doesn't call you Uncle Brett. Also, I'm sick of explaining that there's no relation between me and you mutants. Maybe I'll stop when you quit calling me Junior Gons. I turned 30 this year. Brett grinned and walked toward the van.